statement about the nature of Israel is presented as a question. The question is, can Israel be both Jewish and democratic? I want to say that yes, Israel is a state with a vision. It's not just a state that is supposed to give a home to all the citizens and residents living in it. It is a state that was conceived and founded to be the place in which Jews, whatever their definition of themselves as Jews, Jews can be people living in their own land as a majority community for the first time in their history after 2,000 years of dispersion. And the place for them to do that is the same land of Israel in which they had had political independence in the past. This is the vision of Israel that is the culmination of the movement Zionism that organized Jews at the end of the 19th and the beginning of the 20th century to seek renewed independence. And yes, Israel is a Jewish state, both by the uh, international documents that gave its credibility, but also by the partition that we are now celebrating 70 years of, and by its own declaration of independence. It is a Jewish state. But Israel has two other components, at least two other components, to its vision. It's not only a Jewish state. It's a Jewish state committed also to democracy and to human rights for all in it. And the three elements of the vision are together a complex picture of what Israel is as a state and as a society striving for. And part of the challenge in the internal debate within Israel and the debate between Israel and its critics from the outside is the debate about this vision. And the strongest claim against this vision is that this vision is simply impossible. It's an oxymoron. It's something that is built on a contradiction in terms. It's in principle impossible. So Israel, if it wants to exist and wants to have a vision, must choose. It's either human rights and democracy, which many countries are committed to, or a particular Jewish state. You can't have both. And I would like to argue that this is not only a claim made in the context of a political conflict or a claim made uh, despite the ambiguity of the key terms. I think that this is a claim that doesn't really adequately understand that when a complex society has a vision, and the vision has more than one element, in most countries, when they have a vision, it includes more than one element, the relationships between these elements are always relationships of mutual reinforcement and creative tensions. In fact, mutual reinforcement and creative tensions exist even within each of these components. Anyone who studies democracy knows that there are internal tensions within the ideal of democracy. Is democracy majority vote? Or is democracy a form of political regime that allows people equal dignity and concern? What do we do when we have to make decisions in democracy? Should a democracy ban a party whose platform is anti-democratic? All these questions are within the ideal of democracy. And in order to have a functioning democracy, you have to do a lot of work in making decisions about the arrangements within democracy. Same with human rights. We are all for freedom of expression. Freedom of expression is very important for democracy. Same with freedom of association. But there are other rights too, like the right to privacy, for instance. Now, the right to privacy and the right to freedom of expression often conflict. So, Many people agree and concede 
that democracy and human rights are related and have mutually supportive elements and also some tensions. But then they say these two commitments are general. They are colorblind. They are not particular. Judaism, on the one other hand, is a particular commitment. It distinguishes between Jews and non-Jews, between members and non-members. How can a state which is committed to a particular group in some way, in any way, be consistent or compatible with democracy? Because I would like to put to you the idea that a healthy, robust state is a state that has a strong society. A strong society is a free society. A free society is a society that allows people in it to be different. But a healthy society is also a society that connects individuals together. A healthy society must go in a way between individualism, respect for any individual, so each individual, and solidarity, and responsibility between the private and the public. And one of the purposes of democracy is to allow states who have societies with rifts among their groups to function together to promote the public interest of the state itself. Democracy is a society built of individuals who are equal citizens, irrespective of their affiliations, but who also maintain as very important parts of their identity these other non-civic affiliations. And a healthy society is a society in which the citizenry can invoke, can rely on the resources of the civic solidarity, of the political sense of patriotism, and on the community, other affiliations that give them deeper senses of meanings and belongings. Census, a society is the society of its shared citizenship and its political institutions, but also the society of the autonomous groups that continue to flourish within it and form together a part of the political community. And the political community that enriches and allows and facilitates these groups is a stronger political community because of its imminent pluralism. Now, the idea of Zionism is that Jews should have self-determination. The idea of democracy is for the political, for the group living in a certain territory to help to have self-determination. So in a way, the inspiration for both Zionism and all forms of nationalism and democracy are the same source. The source is the wish of a group to have a measure of self-rule, to have a measure of autonomy, to have a measure of being responsible for the decision they make so that when they make decisions about social welfare or about development or about social justice, they make these decisions not merely based on political or economic theory. They make these decisions as part of their membership in an ongoing cultural and meaningful community. So Zionism and democracy are both motivated by the same power. I'm saying that in every democratic society, and in every non-democratic society, 
the robustness of society is its ability to be open to pluralism, to variety, to see the richness of different perspectives, but also to have the powers that connect people to their traditions and allow these different traditions to function together politically within a state. Now, the vision of the State of Israel is precisely that. And all the international discussions of Zionism and all the internal debates about Zionism among Jews are about how to translate this need that Jews have to have one place in which the public culture is Jewish and they fight with each other very, very strongly about what Judaism means today. Is it just a religion? Religion cum nation? Only a nation? What are the implications about marriage and divorce laws, regulations, days of rest, Jewish law? All these are hotly debated among Jews everywhere and among Jews in Israel. The Jewish state is not, as some people claim, a Jewish theocracy. The Jewish state is also not an exclusive Jewish ethnic state. It's not at all like that, because Jews have always, even when they were independent, asking the questions of what should be the life of Jews and how Jews should relate to non-Jews living around them. Jews never lived, you know, <laughs> on their own. There were always other peoples around with the Jews. And the questions of how do we deal with these other people is a constant question. It's not of having one group of people, universal salvation, with everyone seeing the same light. The vision of Israel for messianic times is that yes, people do see the same light and do recognize the same God, but they come to this recognition as different peoples. They remain different peoples. They remain peoples who enjoy their difference, not because it's superior, not because it's the only way to be. They enjoy the difference because difference is good. Now, as I said, there are two main challenges to Israel as a Jewish democratic state committed to human rights. One is the external challenge, mainly by Arabs, but not only by Arabs, saying that the whole thing is impossible. The internal challenge is now joined with that challenge, and the internal challenge says, even if in principle you're right, the realities of Israel are such that it is not democratic, it is very Jewish, no question about it, but it's not democratic, or as some of my Arab friends say, it's democratic to the Jews, but it's Jewish to the Arabs. Israel as a Jewish state is the idea that for Jews to be able to maintain their culture and enjoy physical and cultural identity, security, they must have not only autonomy, not only self-rule, as Jews can have and often do have in many other places in the world, they must also have a state in which A, they can defend themselves physically and culturally, and B, in which they can deny the option that Jews choose or must choose anywhere else. And this is the choice to privatize their Jewish identity, to make their Jewish identity something that is done in the home, in the family, in the synagogue, in the community, not something that is part and parcel of what we do as people who exercise power. A state to take good care of its citizens and residents, all of them, must be effective. 
This is something that some modern theories of democracies forget. They are so afraid of the concentration of power and the abuse of power that they only look for checks and balances that will limit power. Limiting power is very important. But we all will also need energetic government to take care of all the very, very serious challenges that modern societies and states face. A state to take good care of its society, inclusive of everyone, must be an effective state committed to the welfare of all who live in it. And in Israel, I think the achievements of Israel, which are very impressive, despite of its serious challenges, the achievements of Israel are built on the fact that it has built a credible combination of the energy of Jews who want to have a place in which they can debate in a political independent community the modern meaning of Jewishness and to offer a way of Jewish life that undertakes this challenge and the commitment that this state takes to be democratic, vibrantly democratic, to be a free society, a society in which every opinion is heard, and a society that is committed to maintain this democracy and this freedom in order to permit Jews a place in the world which can be their national home. Thank you very much.